<laughs> so good. All right, everybody. So we've got another episode of Lifestyle Medicine today. And today we've got my friend Luke Machado, who I went to high school with. Uh, and we went to college together as well. We did. Yeah. We did. Chico State, all through and through, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so Luke and I reconnected recently. And Luke mentioned that he has a podcast. What's your What's the name of your podcast again? Uh, the name of my podcast is Virtual Leadership Academy. Virtual Leadership Academy. And we yeah. got into this conversation about that very thing and your role in education and a lot of the crossover threads that kind of you and I are sharing, at least in our platforms, more or less. So if you would, right. can you kind of give a, an introduction to like what you're doing maybe a little bit about your podcast and some of the threads that we talked about, and then we'll dive into all the, the good stuff. So um, I work as an educational technology coordinator, which you probably know what that is, so I won't explain it at all. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> basically I was a teacher for a while, and then I started incorporating a lot of technology, and then they were like, hey, you should you should work at the district office teaching other teachers to use technology. Uh, and then also kind of making some decisions on the direction of the district with technology. And so that's what I've been, I've been doing for the last six years. And then I recently launched a, a brand, I guess you'd say, with, with a buddy of mine, John Ike, who's a very prolific uh, school leader. And so we have a, a virtual leadership academy with podcast, And uh, we just talk about leadership um, issues, but then try to make it like really specific specific to principals and vice principals and other school leadership um type stuff but um and you know i was think i was thinking this week like where does your world and my world you know professionally kind of overlap yep. and uh one big thing that i try to talk a lot about is uh digital citizenship which is another educational buzzword yeah um but it's it's kind of just like everything around how technology is affecting our lives. Yep. Like your well-being, keeping your information private, to cyberbullying, to your relationships, to social media, like digital literacy, the news, like that whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, try to talk to parents about it um, whenever they'll listen. And, <laughs> and, uh, and it's something I think a lot about too, and I'm sure, sure. you and your guests, I mean, that's got to be a big part of what you're doing, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I think, yeah, and I will we'll flesh this out for sure, but I think like a big piece of it is definitely the effect that technology is having on kids for one. That's like a, that's a big one. You know, that yeah. I've read about this and I'm sure you have too, right? That the, the rates of depression, suicidal uh, tendencies amongst kids and the social media era is like considerably higher and self-esteem amongst kids is lower. So that whole right. wellness piece there, um, I think is really something to look at. But then a lot of people that I work with at the adult level, uh, just, I think stress levels, people not sleeping well, there's so many offshoots of what happens with excessive technology and us not knowing yeah. how to mitigate it at all. <laughs> like that right. is something Absolutely. that's pretty, pretty brutal. So when you said that just now, you said, you know, when you talk to parents, if they'll listen, uh, what did you mean by that? Is there a pushback on this topic? No, no. I mean, it's hard to get parents to come to after school events. So like, yeah, I push it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. but we have great parents in our district and, um, the ones that come are super happy to, to get this information. Um, that was just more of a offhand comment. Um, yeah. but anyways, so to what you said though, um, one of the things I always start with was, do you guys think that parents spend more or less time than their kids on devices? Mm. And, and, I, and then I bring up the stat. So what do you, what, what do you think? I do would, parents spend, yeah. I would think that parents honestly probably spend as much time as the kids, if not more, that, that would be my guess, but I don't know. Yeah. It would be kind of a silly question if it wasn't, if that wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like kind of obvious, like right. obviously it's a trick question. Right. Um, but yeah, you're, I mean, you're dead on. So yeah. parents spend a little, little bit more than teenagers, um, a little less than, than younger kids. Mm -hmm. um, but it's around like a nine hours a day of screen, of total screen time. Holy shit. Um, it's a lot. Yeah. Which it sounds intense and that, that could include even homework. 
for kids. Sure. You know, because like a lot of kids are being assigned online homework. Um, so it's just a lot of screen time. Yeah. Um, and then the question is, is that like, is that bad? Like, <laughs> right. Or is that, is that okay? Like, I don't know. Is, is that good? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and I'm, I don't know like a lot about the rays that are coming out of the, <laughs> out of the screens. Sure. So I don't talk about that. Yeah. I just talk about, you know, like, like kind of getting away from that question. Cause I don't think anybody knows of what the right amount of time is. Mm-hmm. Like what's the right amount of time? Oh, it's two hours. Everybody knows that it's two, right. two hours and 10 minutes. Right. Um, so what I try to talk about is like, what I just go like now back way up. What goals do you have for your kids? Yeah. Is the technology in their life helping them achieve those goals or holding them back from those goals? And you mentioned a big one, which is my number one thing. My number one advice as a teacher yeah. to parents is sleep. Yeah. Like the number one thing you can do for your kids is not have anything to do with homework is there anything to do with academics? Yeah. Like the absolute number one thing is make sure that they're getting enough sleep. Yeah. Um, and then the technology is creeping into that world. We're having a problem. Kids are like falling asleep at their desks. Fully. Um, some of these kids, you know, Fortnite tell, tell whenever <laughs> yeah, right. the image of like the kid with the light up face under the covers, like you can just see it. Right. Yep. Um, and then I'm guilty of all these things as well. Oh, fully man. So am I, that, I think that's the thing that's, I think kind of scary at the same time is where I'm, I definitely try to implement and I do implement like what I'm, what I'm sharing with people and what I'm teaching. But at the same, at the same time, I'm totally guilty of those nights where I'm like, well, I'm going to, you know, go on a three hour YouTube binge because I can't sleep and I'm going to be up and I know this isn't really going to help my sleep cycle, but you fall into it because it's easy, you know, and there's definitely, you know, technology at your fingertips. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a weird thing to have. I think so much information, especially in the context of a phone. Like, do you remember when we, when we had Nokia phones in high school and it I was... didn't get a phone until college. Really? I didn't get a phone until I was like 22. Wow. You were late in the game. I, I was late. Yeah. And what did you get an iPhone right away? Uh, no, I got a flip phone right away. Like a Blackberry or something like that. And I remember the first Hopefully this isn't TMI, but the first <laughs> night I had a cell phone with me yeah. in college, I got a number, you know, of a lady. Yeah. And I was like, that's why people have phones. <laughs> uh, <Right. Yeah. laughs> that's what's happening. But I'm a, I'm a little bit of a late bloomer. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like I, yeah, but I do remember what you're talking about with, with the Nokia's in, in high school. Yeah. Well, and it was, it was so much simpler. And I think that's, that's the thing is there, there, was, oh, yeah. there wasn't the, there wasn't the, the um the lure to get stuck on your phone because all you could do was call and text and texting was you had to hit a you know a number three or four times to get to a letter so messages were short so yeah yeah and there was like it was a very yeah. different ball of wax so i just feel like the propensity to stay up um and to for it to affect our yeah. sleep cycles was greatly diminished and now it's um yeah almost impossible to get away from it seems like the friction between you and the greatest entertainment the world has ever seen is like pretty much disappearing. Like, and the the inter- the best entertainment the world's ever seen is probably Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not even like movies anymore. Right. Like, I was <laughs> I was listening to some director going going my movie has to be more entertaining than Twitter. So I got to go back to the drawing board because <laughs> we can't make movies the way we used to. <laughs> it's so true, man. It's so like, true. That's right. Like who wants to sit and watch a two hour movie when they can just go yeah. on to social media? hundred like, percent. Yep. I hear that completely. Yeah. Your movie's got to be very good. Right. Um, so what have you, Luke, th- like thus far? Okay. So you're, you're educating on this topic and, and you're an advocate for kids getting sleep, like, because you're seeing kids, Mm-hmm. Uh, in classrooms falling asleep and attention spans I'm sure are going down with that. So, you know, what outside of kids falling asleep like either through the research that you've come across or what you're seeing in real time being in school settings, what are you seeing in terms of kids from, you know, some years back till now as the technology curve gets faster and faster? What are you seeing? Um, I think it affects Obviously, sleep's number one. I think it affects number two, I would say, relationships. So we have a lot of issues coming into the classroom that didn't happen 
in the classroom. Mm. So they happened on social media, oh. but it all, all makes its way in to the classroom. I'm talking about like, you know, interpersonal relationship stuff. Yeah. Somebody posts something, you know, that, that type of stuff. And it doesn't even have to be cyberbullying. It's just like what they call digital drama, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, so I, I would say number two is we're probably we're seeing a lot of that stuff, and it's really frustrating for educators because it's out. It's even outside of our network. You know, it right. happens at home. <clears throat> right. So they're having a fight maybe at recess, and then they go home and they're texting about it all night, and then that whole it's like. <laughs> It's like a volcano erupted, and then that all flows into the classroom in the morning. Right. And the teacher's like, well, we left. It was fine. Right. What happened? It's right. like, well, we're all constantly connected <clears throat> the, whole, the whole night, you know? So, so that yeah, that's another big one. So, you know, and I – this is what parents want, and I even make like a joke out of it. I go, so I know what you're here for. You're here for the uh, – to know exactly how much screen time and you're right. here to know what the what the uh the app list is like the app list that you should have for your kids mm-hmm. of the of the apps you know? and then that's like i don't have any of those answers for you nobody yeah. knows the answers to those two questions right right <laughs> so just sort of eliminate that and then rethink it as the goal and it kind of landed on that at first i was very like you know what let's be positive with this like what can you do with technology? Like we should encourage our kids to share their social media accounts with us and be like proactive parents. And then I kind of went almost too far into, you know what we really need? We need rules like (laughs) like, here. And I even like would give them like a plan. (laughs) Like here's a list of rules you can choose from. Like there should be absolutely no texting while you're walking down the street. Like people getting hit by cars. Right. Uh, No tech, like, family basket of cell phones like some some families will have like a basket yep. everyone puts their cell phones in there at a certain time of night some parents turn off the wi-fi at night um but i'm like you have to have discipline you have to have rules and then i kind of came to like a middle ground where it's like what do you want for your kids like mm-hmm. what goals do you have for them and now look let's look at their technology habits and let's see what, what is actually holding them back and what is pushing them forward Right. So I'll go like your kid wants to be an artist. Um, if you can get your hands on an iPad, there's a ten dollar app called Procreate where you can make professional level drawings on. Mm. Right. You don't need oils and all this stuff. Like I like that stuff too. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you have ten dollars, your kid can be working um, on drawing. Right. You know. There's an app called Simply Piano where it'll listen to a keyboard and tell you if you're playing the right notes and do lessons. Mm-hmm. Can't afford a piano teacher. It's I think it's like ten bucks a month yep. um, for the full thing. And you know my son actually uses that for his piano lessons right right now. Oh, so it's cool. like, what do you want to be? What do you want to learn? What goals do you have? And then, you know, I'm not sure, but part of that is friendships. Right. So like they want to play uh, Fortnite with their friends. Mm-hmm. It's like. Okay, a goal of theirs is to have friendships. Right. But when the friendship is getting in the way of sleep, that gets in the way of school, then you need a plan for right. that, how much you're going to be playing that Fortnite, you know? Yeah, absolutely. No, it's a complicated system of stuff because there there's multiple variables. And like you said, this stuff is bleeding into the social context of kids outside of school right it's happening at home it can happen anywhere they can they can have like this information pipeline at any time so the question that kind of comes up for me is as you're talking about this you know you're seeing kids and Mm -hmm. what's kind of interesting about this and and also nerve-wracking for me when i read about it is there is the technology effect on say kids from you know zero to two then the impact of screen time on kids from like four to, you know, four to seven, that kind of a thing. And then seven to 10 and then into the teenage years. And then we get into adulthood, <clears throat> excuse me, when the brain is more fully formed, right. but in your wheelhouse of, of, you know, where you're educating and whatnot, like what's the age group that you're sort of focusing on? Like what's the, what's the, you know, the, the demographic that you touch? Oh, uh, from f- probably from four to 18, you know, uh-huh. okay. K, TK 12. Wow. So from pre K to 
12. So you're getting, a, that's, yeah, you're getting a broad spectrum yeah. then. You're getting to see quite a bit in terms of how this affects the different age groups, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Um, do you, do you think like with that, what you've seen so far, um, I guess the kids that are there, what I've, what I've read and tell me what you think about this. Cause you're, you're, you're dabbling in this stuff, but what I've read is that, you know, the younger, the kid, the less screen time is, you know, suggested because their brains are still developing and the fast, uh, you know, the pace of most video content that we're seeing nowadays, it's so fast that kids don't have time to even process. And that's yeah. why, you know, Mr. Rogers was so popular, you know, when we were kids too, part of that whole thing was how slow the camera moved. He was singing mm -hmm. songs. There weren't fast cuts. So, you know, do you... Do you kind of get yeah. behind that, that, you know, the younger the kid, yeah. the less screen time, and then, you know, the older you get as the brain develops to introduce a little bit more if need be? So I also bring up oftentimes that mm -hmm. Bill Gates and Steve Jobs really, really limited yep. technology. And maybe you've even read articles from Silicon Valley about how a lot of these yep. engineers and people working on this technology are really limiting and they're putting their kids in Montessori and That's right. uh, they... And it's like, well, what do they know that um, right. that, that we might not know? Um, but I, I can just tell you, I also have kids in the three to six range. I have a three-year-old and a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> a three-year-old and a six-year-old. Yeah. And I can tell you, uh, and I, I severely limit uh, screen time. Yep. And I'm a technology guy. Yeah. Like it's in my job title, literally. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we, you know, he has iPad time uh -huh. on the weekends and zero during the week. Yeah. And uh, that's because of what I see. So I, I, I kind of do use a scientific method. I mm -hmm. try things out and then I alter a variable and then I, I go from there. And I just notice um, it's crazy the locking in that the young kids do on screens like iPads and stuff, yep. they get locked in. Yep. I mean, we really had to work on when the time was up, like getting off of that without throwing a fit. Like we really had to work on that. Yeah. Um, Cause, and, and he would throw a fit like nothing else. Like he had, to have, you know, it was like intense, right. it, intense in a way that kind of weirds you out. And it's like, well, that doesn't seem good. Yeah. Um, and, and you're right about the, the pace and the, um, there's a desensit it desensitizes you to to like fast things and then like that's your new, new set point for entertainment mm -hmm. um, so I, I have noticed with um, with kids it's like an apathy kind of develops because if it's not at uh -huh. that level you've sort of lost my interest like my my entertainment bar went up to like you know yeah you better change the subject every five seconds and flash colors at me um go see like one of the new lego movies if you want to see the the pace of uh of like modern entertainment it's oh. kind of intense and like mr rogers would ask you a question and then he would wait yeah totally there was the and one. you would you could actually like think about it and you're like hmm yep i guess i like blue right he's like, oh that's great like yeah. <laughs> right no, you're absolutely like, right that pace man that i I don't know. It feels good. It feels good. So yeah, I, I definitely am easing them into screen time. Um, and I see huge value of, you know, technology as a learning tool. Like sure. it's amazing. I mean, you can learn anything you want now yep. almost for free. Yeah. And that's, that's right. crazy to me. So, and I, now that my kid is six, I really am trying to explain like, let's say you spend, an hour doing something, what did you get from that? Mm -hmm. So like your friends might be playing Mario Brothers, but you're doing Prodigy, which is a math game. Mm -hmm. And like at the end of your Prodigy, like you're all the way through the first grade curriculum already. So school's like pretty easy when math time comes. Mm -hmm. But um, so like, w like what are you getting out of this? Um, so I'm, I'm, because that's kind of what I do with myself. So it's just back to that like goal thing, like what goal do you have? Um, and how is, t so is techno all technology does is speed things up. Right. It just like, like enhances what we already have. Um, so what do you want to accelerate in your life? Right. Like that's another way to, to frame it. Yeah. 
it's a good um, it's a good question to be asking I, I think yeah because what i'm hearing in what you're saying too is that you have to proactively in a sense control your relationship with technology because left unchecked it seems like the technology can definitely augment you especially in the younger you are the more that becomes apparent the more that mechanism is you know it's stronger let's just say because uh, like you, you know, my daughter is about three and a half. She's not quite three and a half yet, but she's three and a half. And I mean, as of a month ago is the first time we've really let her have any screen time. She has mm-hmm. seen a picture on my phone. She's seen a 30 second clip of her doing something and she laughs and she, right. let, she lets it go. But I mean, actual sitting down and, you know, we did, and this is probably like, we're probably a little too strict, but we just started with 20 minutes a weekend. We're like, we're going to watch tw- yeah. 20 minutes yeah. of Toy Story. We have a conversation with it before it starts. And we're like, you know, at the 10 minute mark, we're like, okay, we're halfway. There's going to be another half of this. And, you know, yeah. the interesting thing is because we've waited, we think <clears throat> she doesn't have any rebellion towards it whatsoever. Like not even remotely. Mm. We're like, okay, baby, the movie's over for now. We're yeah. going to stop. And she's like, okay. And she gets up and it's done. And we're like, holy shit, that's right. ama- that, that's amazing because what we're hearing and what yeah. I see in other people's kids who have sure. access to screen time from the get-go, I mean, God love them. You know, kids are whatever. You know, they can be crazy, but like they can just be little shits. Like they just turn into like oh, yeah. these little monsters because you're taking away yeah. their crack. You know, and it's like, what are you doing? Like, give me that back. I want that speedy, fast thing. And yeah, um, yeah. that's just kind of mind boggling to me. So we feel good about it. And we're, we're now we're seeing our kid. We're not like, none of this is about like raising a superior kid. That's not what it's about. We're just like you said, I can see it. And I, and I see kids that are, um, man, they just get so hyperactive and they get very volatile emotionally. And right. that's the part, like you said, it's unnerving to see a kid get that emotionally destabilized yeah. from the removal of something that, right. That's, I mean, that, boy, that is nerve wracking. That does, I don't like that. You know, that makes me, I'm like, I don't want that for my kid. Yeah. And, and a lot of it is so, uh, individual, like, like your specific kid, right. Mm-hmm. Might be more or less susceptible to those things, right. right. Than somebody yeah. else's kid. Like my daughter is way less into screens than my mm-hmm. son. Mm-hmm. My son's like, and I think it's like, oh, that makes sense. I think it's like he has a higher bar for um, he doesn't need a lot of stimulation mm-hmm. to be like, like satiated. Right. And then some kids need a lot of stimulation to just even just without screens or whatever. Um, I noticed that in the classroom when I was a teacher, there's like different bars at which kids want to be at for mm-hmm. like just feel like maybe it's the flow state or something like right they have a different bar and then like technology kind of like really affects that so mm-hmm. some kids are really susceptible to getting addicted to it and i don't know if addicted is like a stronger word but they get like really locked in and then some kids are like eh, take it or leave it but um i do see a, a total difference so you got to be kind of prescriptive to your own kid too now are you saying you guys didn't do any screen time like any movies correct nothing we, oh, just, wow. we just didn't give her any screen time um, whatsoever. And that, and I think that was on the strict side, but the reality was, you know, what we were seeing is that the more we, we read to her, I mean, that was movies were books with awesome visual pictures. I don't know if you know that book from when I was a kid called, uh, Animalia by Graeme Bass. And it's these really beautiful, I mean, illustrated pictures with really, um, intricate vocabulary, but it's highly imaginative. And I think that was the kind of stuff that we were more drawn to because as we would read it, we were seeing her glue into it the way kids glue into screens because she was like, whoa, these pictures are awesome. And she would glue into it, but it was analog and it's stationary and it's something she can touch. And because of that, we just saw the pacing and we were like, why? She's using her imagination and making up characters and pulleys that don't exist in the house and doing stuff. And we were just seeing that it was different. Some Some of the other kids who were getting screens really early, they weren't Mm-hmm. They weren't engaging that creative, emotional uh, imagination center as much. They were, you know, it just, yeah. again, it, and I think for me, I'm always a little bit on the cautious side with all technology. I don't know why. I, I think personally, because yeah. I think I, I noticed an impact on like how 
I grew up, like I really feel like screen time had an effect on me because I played a lot of video games as a kid. Not that they made me violent or anything like that, but I sat and played video games for so long, for so many yeah. hours, and I was such a screened kid that, you know, there's a there's that, um, it's not even a study, but it's it's something that people have, have commented about our generation where they said, you know, we grew up when there was like Nintendo was coming on the scene, which was very like, you know, just rudimentary oh, yeah. graphics. And then we saw the onset of the internet and then we got high graphics gaming and then we got just all of this VR is like the next big thing. And, right. you know, when I saw, I don't know, maybe this is similar for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts. When I was a kid, I would do all that stuff, watch all the games, you know, and I had, I had really difficult time with reading comprehension. I mm. had, um, to this day, when I read a book, I get sleepy and like, and I, like that's, that's, and that's something that's come up. People talk about it now. Like a lot of people my age, they say if they read, they get uh, sleepy. Like it's just an, almost an immediate reaction. Yeah. And what a, what they're saying is this was the generation where we got, we started to get a lot of screen time. We started to get um, not from phones, but just movies, video mm -hmm. games, and we were sedentary, plugged into a screen, interacting, and it may have had some brain effects. And that's always stayed with me. I mean, I struggled in school. I'm not saying it was because of that stuff, but I think it had a hand. And Maybe. so, yeah. What are your what are your thoughts on? Um, yeah, what was your relationship to screen time like when you were growing up? Was there so was... I so I had like you were my parent like I had strict yeah okay. so I the only thing I wanted in the entire world was a Nintendo like the original yep NES everybody was getting it yeah I must have been like yeah. six seven eight oh anything <laughs> every single dandelion I ever saw every wishing well every whatever. Ever. If I had found a magic lamp, like it would have been, first wish would have been to have a Nintendo. Yeah. And I was not allowed to have one. Yeah. And then I was only allowed like one show a week, maybe. And it was the old Batman. Oh, yeah. Like came on after school. Yeah. Like at four o'clock or something. Yeah. But like I, that's all I was allowed to do. But my dad had a computer and it was. It, not one of the first computers, but you know, it was an MS DOS computer, and I was allowed to go on that, and that had a couple of really rinky dink games on it, <laughs> but um, but because it wasn't like high, it was it wasn't like an entertainment tool, um, primarily. Mm -hmm. I ended up, like tooling around on it a lot, and I think that's where I got my like technology acumen from. Yep, it is because that's where I spent my time. So I I. But to go to your point, though, I think the reason that maybe your kid can focus on books and 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 mine is really into reading too mm -hmm. is that you don't have any competition, right? Like I have heard from parents like, well, when I you know they rarely ever choose to read, but who what kid's gonna choose reading when you know Breath of the Wild, the new Zelda game that looks amazing by the way, yeah, is <laughs> an option. like if that's an option. I'm choosing that option for sure. Like I chose eight big graphic games over yeah. reading any book in the world when I was a kid. Um, but when you just sort of eliminate that option, then books are the most entertaining thing in your house. That's true. They just are. Yeah. So like, of course she's going to want to read books. Um, and then if you, you know, sleep and reading to your kids, um, those are the, probably the number one and number two. Um, it's just like a culture. It's like a culture thing in your house. Like, is mm -hmm. your are you TV watching culture or are you reading culture? Or are you a mix of those things? Like, what kind of culture do you want to have? So, it's a it's a great uh, that's a great way yeah. to, to look at it. The way you just said that, like, what kind of culture do you want uh, in the context of your house? Because I think that that's a big one. Like, that's a yeah. So you know, when you talk about this, you had said how this stuff bleeds into other things, right? Like. Kids are at school, then they go home, they get into a Twitter feud or a Facebook feud or an Instagram feud or wherever it is. They come back to school, yeah. they're stressed out. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's a mess, right? right? So these things kind of bleed into one another. And do you see, or are you hearing from parents, I should say, that um, family dynamics are thrown off by technology? Because like we've all seen this, right? Everyone's at a dining room table. The parents mm -hmm. and the kids are all on their phone while they're eating. No one's talking. Yeah. That kind of stuff. So right. 
that stuff does have an effect, though I feel like in education too, because it's like what's happening at home affects emotional stability. If you're not emotionally stable or uplifted, learning becomes more difficult, right? Like people know this, okay. like if you're scared, it's very difficult to learn something. If you're, you know, excited and loose, you'll soak up whatever right. the hell you're studying. So yeah, what what are your thoughts on that? Like, what are you seeing or do parents talk about it? Is it even on the table? Is it, um, is there an awareness around that? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think what you're talking about, uh, we, we would call like the conditions of learning. Like there's all these conditions yep. that need to be met for learning to be taken in mm -hmm. safety being like the baseline. Right. Yeah. Um, but then when you're talking about the dinner table thing, I think what, just think about what's not being built in that situation. Right. The conversation skills, the listening skills, just learning from your, from each other, yeah. you know, is not, is not being built there. Um, but yeah. Wow. Wait, what was your what was your question? I kind of lost it a little bit. No, I mean it wasn't. There wasn't an explicit question. I guess it was. I mean it was kind of asking. Um, oh, because, oh I because yeah. these things bleed into one another. I yeah. guess are parents coming to you, and is this coming up in conversation yeah. that like my kids I won't bet. talk to me because they're on their phone, or kids maybe saying my parents don't talk to me because they're on their phone? You know, are you seeing that kind of thing? Yes. I guess. Yes, I there's a powerlessness. Mm. Uh, that I've, that I'm hearing like, and I've heard things like my, my kid won't, won't let me see what's on their phone. And it's kind of like, well, you're the parent. Like you right. take the phone take and the you phone. look, right. you take the phone and you look at it, but, but kids, you know, uh, to be on the parent side now, uh, there are crazy apps that like, there's a calculator app that looks like a calculator. It's called calculator and it's really to hide files in. Like that's the whole purpose of the app. Oh shit! Um, there's all kinds of sneaky stuff. Um, kids will have fake, uh, fake or not fake, uh, an Instagram account that they share with their parents and friend them oh. and let them see. But then they have two other accounts that they're actually using with their friends. And if you take the kid's cell phone away, uh, we'll see kids, um, bought, you know, like just using their friends at school to do their to do their posting and stuff. Oh, wow. So I, there is kind of a, you know, a powerlessness. Cause like, and also in a lot of houses, the kid is the most technically savvy person. Right. So they're figuring out, you know, breaches to whatever system <laughs> that you're, you're trying to, totally. you're trying to figure out, you know, oh, but man. that's why the answer is not going to be, I, I think you should do things like, discipline rules sure. and firewalls and stuff like that. I think you should, but like there's a higher value there, which is, you know, having the goal conversation and having like, um, you know, like kids that have a vision for their life and a goal are, you know, less likely to be drug addicts. Well, they're also probably mm -hmm. less likely to do stupid things on social media right? and, and to get addicted to where it interferes with those goals and, and vision. Right. Yeah. So I, and I try to alleviate the powerlessness by, um, by giving like lots of resources. So one for your listeners, if they haven't heard of it is common sense media. I don't know if you've heard of that before. No. Okay. Common sense media.org is a nonprofit and it's a resource for parents and educators. So for parents, you can look up any app website, anything digital, um, and it'll have a review like an age for what it's appropriate for, mm -hmm. uh, why it got that rating, like what parents have said about it. It has parent reviews, kid reviews, um, and then it just like can educate you. So there's like videos on there like, what's Snapchat? And it'll be like oh, wow. kids kids explaining to parents what Snapchat is. Um, so when your kid's like, hey, I wanna get this new app, and you go, okay, let's look it up on Common Sense Media, and see that, okay, it's for your age group, but what is it? Like, let's check it out. And then it's, say like, you know, possible concerns with this app or, or stuff like that. Cause I, I've had parents say, like my kid was playing Fortnite, you know, and, and I was okay with it. But then his headphone jack came out of the machine one day and I was walking by. I didn't know there was other people from around the world that he was talking to. Oh, uh, right. So they didn't even know it was like a social net work game right because it's, it's an open world game where there's people playing all over the world and they're just in that 
and they can interact with people and there's, you know, there's weirdos in there, um, sure. you know, and I guess they were actually having a weird conversation with somebody and they heard this just like coming through the speakers, Whoa. but they didn't even know, they didn't even know that it was, you know, they thought they were playing Legend of Zelda, whereas like, right, you know, that's not the dragon saying that that's somebody <laughs> from another country, maybe. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so like you can educate yourself um, there are some good resources out there. Common Sense Media is probably the best, uh-huh. most comprehensive. No, that's great. And they use like lots of slang and stuff, uh, so you can know what we're talking about. Um, like they they use like up to date language. I say when they're when they're describing sure. the apps and stuff, so you can understand what your kid is saying right. a little bit better. What are you? So yeah. No, that's great. I mean, that's really helpful because I think there's a lot of parents who are uh, in that boat and that are like, yeah, yeah. Like when, the, when the kid is more tech savvy than the parent, I think this kind of stuff is really important. And that's usually the case. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on. So I think the way you said it, um, the way you're describing it, right? It's like, what do you want? What's the goal? Right? What do you what do you? And for me, that kind of equates to what are you going to get that's going to be of value, quote unquote. And I think that idea of value is really relevant here. And when I work with my clients, I talk about this too. I say it comes down to a simple question, right? This is less in the context of kids, but I think it's definitely applicable because kids become adults. It's mm-hmm. um, what, you know, what do you value more? What do you think is it like right. a family value? What do you value more? Is it your inter- interfacing with a technological device at like the front line of your family or do you value eye to eye contact, physical touch, laughter, joking, like the interaction that happens from human to human connection, right? R- real time, not, you know, not what we're doing even, you know, not, not via Skype, but actual face to face connection with people that you love. Yeah. Which one do you want your kids or your family members or your partner, your romantic partner to value? Like, what are right. you guys doing? And I think it kind of comes down to a simple uh, baseline approach of like, what's, what's, what action is most taking place at home? You know, like, are you guys actually yeah. putting your phones in a bin and just talking? Like, are, are you getting into that space and valuing that? Because value right. is an action in my mind. Like, it's not something that like, oh, I value this. And it's like, if you don't have actionable direction towards that value, right? it's just theory. It's like, it doesn't have any weight in real time. Right. That's exactly what I was thinking. So you you don't say you value things. You either do it or you don't type of thing so Correct. like the value that you currently have is what you do yep like, that is the value that you have yep but the value that you, but that night might that might not be what you want though. yes correct like so you might say i value family turns out everyone's on their phones the whole time when you're at home mm-hmm. so in that reflection you can say i'm not living the value i want currently uh-huh. so that we need to change our habits right yep I mean, that's got to be really similar to, to your world it and is. your message. I mean, it that, is. Yeah, right. Yeah. 100%. I mean, that's that's kind of at the epicenter. What I, in my platform, when I work with clients and I kind of assess them and ask them like some basic things, like how, how often, you know, are you on your phone? How much TV at night? And then I, yeah. I put them into the, this, this thing called technology fasting. And I treat, I treat it kind of the same way we do food. Like when people fast with, with like, there's an eating window, right? So when I call it technology fasting, um, there's a bunch of things I walk through people, people through where I say, okay, um, if you are having trouble sleeping, you or maybe your, your partner or whatever, I said, you know, I give them the research, I talk to them in an educational context over Skype or when I'm consulting with them. And I say, like, look, put your Wi-Fi on a clicker and after 8.30 p.m., internet is off, which means you can't stream. You can't do whatever. Right. And it's really hard for people at first, but when they get through like the first, I'd say 10 to 14 days, that's when they get their head above water because yeah. what starts to happen is they start reading at night and they get sleepy and it's, or they're, yeah. they get bored and they're just kind of like, so they go for a walk or they do something else to fill yeah. that void. And then there's this really cool snowball effect that starts to happen. And it, I think it, but it's hard for people to relax. Like they, they're so, like you said, they're so stimulated that when you actually ask them to relax, it creates this anxiety, even in adults. It's, uh, right. you know, the, it's same thing in meditation. You know, it's like the monkey mind. Like when the, the monkey mind, you know, we got a hamster yeah. on the wheel yeah. up here. If you can't turn that shit down a little bit, 
it's um, or, or at least when you do, I should say, yeah. the anxiety kicks up because you're like, I'm used to that thing sprinting. Oh yeah, in my head. I feel like, I feel like grabbing my phone, any lull during the day. Yeah, everybody does I, that, man. Everybody. I almost like turn to it like this. Like in between when we're talking, I'm like, no, nope, yeah, yeah, no, nope, nope. time to get on my phone. <laughs> Gray's talking. I can't get on my yeah. phone right now. <laughs> right, Gray's totally. talking, but his story's going on. I'm going on my phone for like, sure. Ah. Um, yeah, no, I, I love that idea of the fast because mm-hmm. you really need to reset. I was like talking earlier about your like your bar for being entertained. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you need to reset your set point yeah. for like entertainment because. Uh, yeah, you're, you're like overstimulated, so you need you feel like you need that all the time. But just in order to be uh, mindful and just kind of sit in a chair, yep, that's gonna be really hard if you're used to the dopamine rush of of social media all the time. Oh yeah, I dude, like I, I yeah, ex- that's exactly right. And you know, <laughs> I've I've gotten pretty outside the box with my. Um, with my recommendations to people like, cause a lot of it, I mean, it's kind of, you know, lifestyle guidance is kind of an intuitive process. Cause I've got to tailor it and feel out the person as I'm talking to them. Like, are they even going to go for this? Like I have to play the game. You know, yeah. I, I got to dance mm-hmm. with them a little bit. And I've gotten to places where adults who were like incapable of turning off their phone, they're just like, like, like an addict, man. They would be like, yeah. if I was like, turn your wifi clicker off your stuff at 8 PM, they were just fiending to the point where they couldn't do it. You know? And where I, I got to the yeah. place, I was like, you know, have you tried medical cannabis? Like, instead of like right. doing that, when you get to that peak anxiety, would you be willing to try like you know, <laughs> some context of that? And they're like, well, sure, at least that would kind of fill it. I'm like, great, do that. And it's like, that doesn't put people into, in my experience, it's never put anyone to an, into an addictive relationship with it. What it's done, it's actually given yeah. them a baseline thing to fill for a period of time just to get their mind oriented to not being stimulated. Like that's... It's almost like, yeah, it's like using... What do they use methadone to get off of heroin? Exactly. It's so exactly. Like, we, have, we have to use something else here because like for uh, some going people, cold turkey is not going to work. For yeah. some for some people it doesn't. And that's that's my yeah, point is that I, sure, I'm sure. not prescribing everybody and, start smoking pot yeah. to like, you know, to like technology no, fast. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try both at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. See how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, but I, I'm super positive about technology. Yeah. I, I just feel like, there's just, it's almost like everything has just been accelerated. Mm-hmm. So what's your what's your path? Right. You can have the best, most entertaining night ever because there's so many shows on Netflix that are like better than, you know, movies from 20 years ago. Yep. And there's like 20 of them going on right now that people say I should watch. Uh, or I could learn something uh, because there's an endless amount of education. Or I can listen to uh, Gray's podcast, Lifestyle Medicine, and completely revolutionize my life. You know, like, that's that's no joke, though. Like, yeah. you're out there, like, you know, um, by the way, I, I listened to a few of your episodes uh, in preparation for this, and I can see why people like it. Like, you, you give really, because I don't know anything about what you're talking about, Yeah. but you give really practical advice along the way. Cool. And then I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. You know, I do like wood. I remember thinking, oh, I do like wood. I should put more wood in my house. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's, the, that's where I'm at. Like you're meeting me where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, which is great. Which is great. Yeah. Well, um, I appreciate that. Thank another you. Thing, another thing you said about the, uh, the fasting part, it made me think about like, cause I also like to think about things like a scientist. Mm-hmm. And uh, one thing I try to push at my work a lot is unpiloting. Like, we always do in pilots of new things. Like, let's try out this new app. Let's try out this new thing. Uh, and we call them a pilot. Like, we'll do it with a small group of people. We call it a pilot. And if it's successful, then we bring it to everybody else. Right. So it's pretty standard, you know, integration um, theory. But uh, we never unpilot anything. Yeah. So now in our district, we have, like, 150 apps. Uh, you know, some of them are free, but we pay for a lot. But it's like we rarely ever think to unpilot things and then right. see right is everything okay yeah like it's so like, that, it's like backward it's like the backwards direction yeah. of that right yeah it's like, is that, that necessary so i i like the fast idea as much as i'm already 
not wanting to do it. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I like the, the idea of it because it's like, maybe I don't need to know yeah. what's going on in Syria every five minutes. Right. You know, like, right. I haven't been consulted once on global <laughs> foreign affairs. <laughs> right. You know, no one's banging down my door. <laughs> my research, yeah. <laughs> no one is calling me about that. Right. So, you know, maybe time is better spent somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, funny. I think, um, I think part of this, and I, I think what called me, I thought like, oh, dude, I want to interview you because I, I watch, I listened to a minute. We, we bumped into each other at the pumpkin patch and I was like, what's yeah. your podcast? Yeah. I'm like in the bathroom and I'm listening. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, this is cool. <laughs> I was, I was digging on it, you know, and, um, <laughs> yeah. but what I, what I liked and what I was drawn to was the fact that just fundamentally that, um, I guess that you're making you're making a very basic link, which I think the culture needs to acknowledge that technology has value hundred percent. We're not sitting here like technology is just the devil. Like you can't be like, we're that. Using it yeah, we're right using now. it right now. Exactly. Like, okay. It's, it's fully functional, but also you very clearly just in your uh, platform, the way you're talking about it, you're saying technology, you know, um, I guess, you know, social ability and education, these things we have to be really mindful of how, technology can tip the scales and that we have to we have to think of educational solutions in this context like there has to be um, like you said a middle ground right it can't just be totally extreme it wouldn't make sense for us to do that and I like that um, you're just I don't know that you're pushing towards education using technology but also having a very sound sort of um, cautionary tale to it as well you're saying like hey like let's not be let's not be naive about this. Let's unpilot. Let's pull things back and see where they land. Because I think a big piece of what um, I think you said a couple times, you're like one way to frame it, right? Like to frame the idea to think about this. I mm-hmm. think when we think what we forget about technology is that we don't um, we don't make metaphors of it enough. I don't think we relate it to enough things. That's why I think like uh, for me at least the technology fasting made sense, but what that really boils down to the core concept is, is that when you interface with technology, you're not interacting it, you're consuming it. You're taking it in. You're, I mean, that's, it's a feed into your mind, into your emotions, um, into the, the limbic part of your brain. I mean, it's, you're taking something in a hundred percent and it's like, would you eat, would you eat for eight hours a day? Like, can you imagine if you ate for eight hours a day, what kind of, what kind of person you would look like, Luke? Yeah. <laughs> like, dear God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's excellent. So you said consume. Mm-hmm. So one of the mental models we try to use in education around this topic is consuming versus creating. So the consumer versus the creator. Uh-huh. So you can use technology to consume. You can also use technology to create. Right. Yeah. So we're like, hey, in your classroom, how, how much are your students creating? How much are they consuming? Mm. So there's lots of like, like cool apps and stuff, but a lot of them are like you're watching videos and then you're doing some really structured, like you're choosing the right answer. Yes. And you're kind of like, <laughs> right. yeah, it's like the robotic then, zombie, right? Hopefully that's, yeah. yeah. And then versus, right? Uh, I'm making a podcast mm-hmm. with technology. I'm making art. I'm uh, I'm on a spreadsheet and I'm designing a scientific model. Um, I'm creating videos, uh, a video explanation of a concept. Mm-hmm. That I have. So like those are all like creation levels of technology versus consumer. And like it's obviously technology is great for consuming information. Like we can consume podcasts like this while we're mowing the lawn where we couldn't before. Right. So just open up a whole space for extra learning. Mm-hmm. But but, uh, but we also want to make sure we're not only consuming. We want to make sure our kids are not only using this. They're not only eating eight hours a day, right. like you're saying. Right. You know, they also need to be cooking a little bit. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I like that. Yeah. That. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's um, it's the way I think about it. But I, I just, I like that the what you've presented and what you're talking about fully 
plugs into it. Like I, I'm like, yeah, these mod, like the, the the way you're modeling it, the way you're framing it, definitely makes sense. Um, do you think? You know, I, when I found you on Instagram, I saw it was like Luke Machado draws. You had or you had some kind of name or like I don't know what yeah. your what your name was, but um, and I noticed you just had a bunch of, uh, you know, drawings and it was like, you know, you were talking about potentially like doing some illustrations for kids books mm -hmm. and that idea also sparked some interesting things for me, uh, because I've thought about the same thing. Like I have an art background. I would love to yeah. do something for kids, but have you thought about, or is it discussed the role of art as a counterbalance to technology? Hmm. Um, what do you, could you, uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Um, the idea, like just kind of going back to what you said, um, the consuming and the creating piece, right? So right. a lot of technology sure can be used to create, um, like you said, you know, there's a piano and artistic things. So technology can create, but, but it's kind of like, um, you know, modus operandum or whatever it's called is to feed, is to like, it goes into us. We consume it more than oftentimes, at least in the culture nowadays, we're consuming more technology than we are creating with it to a degree, at least for the everyday civilian. And art most of the time is just the opposite. You're, and I'm talking sculpting, drawing, painting, uh, kids playing with three-dimensional objects, building blocks, doing those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, that's a creationary state where you're basically creating sure. like art doesn't really use you you sort of you know muster expression from the inside and make art so when i talk about the counterbalance it's an idea that i've touched on um and i've you know i haven't found anything direct on it but it's sort of like i don't want to say it's a working theory but what i've seen is the kids that partake in art seem it seems to be sort of like a remedy to a degree to like some of that um tension it's and, yeah, yeah exactly that's it it's, it's, it's cathartic yeah. and it's like you can't do can't check your social media and draw at the same time. Correct. Uh, so it sort of like absorbs that space. Yes. And it's so good for you to be mindful and stuff. But I'm going to push back on you a little bit because sure. uh, almost all of the drawings that mm -hmm. you saw mm -hmm. are created digitally. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. That's cool. So I use an app called Procreate. Mm -hmm. and oh, that's the one you were mentioned earlier, right? I mentioned earlier, yeah. Yeah. So uh, – and I have the Apple Pencil, mm -hmm. and it is uh, so when you're drawing with the with the new stuff, yeah. Um, if you tilt your pencil low, mm -hmm. like like here's a pencil. This is a real pencil, though. You know, like shades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a point oh, line. Wow. It does the full thing, really? and it also has pressure sensitive. So if I press down a little harder, the uh -huh. ink spreads out a little more. So I'm I'm literally like, right. Doing strokes like that um i don't really paint like this <laughs> <laughs> for the people not watching youtube yeah right. yeah yeah but um but but i'm gonna say like to me and i've done both mediums and everything sure technology is just a tool it's just a medium right. so when i'm creating on there it's pure creation in my mind i uh, I, I agree not yeah i mean at all absolutely right so um so but but i do think creating does all the things that you're saying and right. it, it absorbs a space where you would have been. And I think people actually think they get home from work and they're like, I'm so tired. All I can do is sit and watch Netflix. Right. Uh, but actually doing something that seems like it's expending energy will actually relax you more. Like you'll feel better actually expending energy, which is kind of weird in a creative state and you'll feel more relaxed later yep I, I don't know why that is yes but I, I, maybe you can explain it with some sort of energy or something but, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with some of your new age shit great drop it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, funny. so but I, I and honestly like i think it's true and i think it does have something to do with energy also um gosh what were you talking about oh. If I can change the subject. No, no, it's okay. We, so, were, we were saying I know you, were, what you were talking about your art and creating and you know, you're fully right, in a right. creationary state with your technology. Right. So if you want to push yourself in that direction, and I know you're big into uh, feng shui. Yep. Am I saying that right? That's right. Yeah, feng shui. Yep. Okay. Right. So, and that's a design thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the way you're designing your environment. It's an artistic right. 
it's an artistic grasp uh, to alter your environment consciously. Right. Yeah. Right. So if you want to change your technology habits, I've realized how much of a lemming I am. I just kind of walk around my house and I see something and I do it. Right. Yeah. And so my living room, the furniture does not face a TV because you know, you go into a house and it seems like we're like worshiping the TV because like everything's facing the TV. Yep. So what do you do? You sit down and you're looking at a TV and you go, oh, I guess I'm going to watch TV. In, in my, I, I've des- I redesigned my living room to where the TV's like over here. It's like over the mantle. It's in an awkward position to oh. watch. You almost can see it. But when you sit down, you're looking across to another seat. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're going to get less TV. You're going to get more conversation. Um, and then if I, when I put my phone charger across the room, I was much more less likely to wake up and do some breathing, do some affirmation type stuff, yep. do some visioning versus grabbing my phone because it was right there. Correct. Right. So it's almost like when I have my wits, if I design like a mousetrap environment for myself, <laughs> I would just follow that. Yeah. I would just kind of follow that. Thing. And I, yep. I think when you were talking about feng shui, I was kind of thinking like, oh, the same thing. Like, and I've been to your house and it's like very relaxing and stuff. And I just couldn't imagine you would have, you know, lots of screens everywhere and, and, and things like that. I think you're, you're like pushing yourself in the way you want to go. Yeah. Right. That's so exactly like, right. Want to have better technology habits, design your, your use of technology to be cumbersome. Yeah. Put friction between you and the things that you don't want to do. Right. Um, put your phone far away put your TV behind something. Uh, we have a DVD player, but I keep it in a cupboard. So the kids, <laughs> kids don't ask to watch DVDs. We do Friday movie night. Yeah. And it takes me 20 minutes to set it up every freaking time. Well, dude, um, I, I have yeah. to, I have to give you a side story to that. So I love that. Um, I and, I, and I agree. Um, but so this is my whole relationship with projectors. So as of, <laughs> as of a few years, as of, since I moved back to Sacramento, okay, one thing, this is how it started. You know when yeah. you watch new televisions and they have that soap opera effect where the screen motion looks too smooth? That yes. is the bane of my existence. I hate that. I think it. Rem- I, I don't like it because it, it, I think it takes away the feeling of film. It almost um, it makes it look like a soap opera. It looks overly processed, like processed food. I just don't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. It has like a cheap quality. Um, like more or yeah, 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 totally. So it started with that. And then I was like, you know what? Uh, and looking at TVs and stuff, they were like, well, you know, there's plasmas that don't do that. And then there's projectors, right? Which is the old school. Um, mm-hmm. it projects light and projectors have gotten amazing now, but yeah. the, here's the caveat. Projectors, uh, are not great unless you have blacked out windows during the daytime, which, me- which, which means if I'm going to watch something, I knew this and I was like, aha, this is like a stopper. Like uh. this will keep me, from watching television yeah. during the day, especially because I podcast, uh, I work, I consult, uh, I hang out and socialize all in the same room. And I was like, so this room's got to be multifunctional, but it was a totally, like you said, it was a, um, it was a barrier to make my technology cumbersome. Mm. Pro- this projector, and I didn't black out my windows. I was like, I'm not going to black them out for that reason that if I have it on during the day, it's really difficult to watch a movie. I'm kind of like, what? The f-? Especially if the scene is dark. Yeah. I'm like, this is dumb. I'm just going to turn it off. So right. in doing that, um, I got kind of a win. There's an analog, almost like like vinyl or like having an older technology, even though projectors aren't. But having an image project, it's got mm-hmm. a better quality image. And I can't watch it during the day. So it pretty much limits me to like watching something at night if I'm going to do anything. And that's pretty much it. So and it, your screen is big. Yes. Bigger. And it's w- way cheaper at the end of the day than buying a hundred inch TV or 100%. whatever however big your screen is. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. Oh man. That's, that's freaking genius. I love that. Um, yeah, we, we actually bought one of these like screens, uh, with the metal frame. It, oh, it's yeah. too big for my house. I put it, I put it in the backyard uh-huh. and watch movies every once in a while. Yeah. 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 But man, it takes 25 minutes to set it up. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a rare occasion when dad's feeling like <laughs> watching the movie outside. <laughs> oh, but man, yeah, it's funny. We are so susceptible to, uh, to friction, right? Yeah. Um, or, ba- or barrier. It's just like, if you can make something 
30 seconds easier, you're just that much more likely to do it or harder. You're that much more likely to not do it. Um, I think like a lot of that stuff that I'm paraphrasing is from this book called Atomic Habits. Atomic um, Habits? Atomic Habits. Yeah. It's, it's based, I've read a lot of like habit books mm-hmm. and a lot of great theories and stuff, but this book, it just makes it like really easy to, uh, to think about habits you want to get rid of habits you want to make uh, more attractive to you. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it's a great, it's a great book. Well, this is cool, Luke. Like I really appreciate man. Like, um, I guess what you're doing for like this cause, I mean, I know it, this is not the only thing you're focusing. I know it's like one of many things in the spectrum of like educating and making, sure. um, education better and more efficient and more accessible to kids. Like I, I'd love that you're doing that because I just think education is so important. So, um, man, in closing, you know, um, all these things that we've talked about, right? There's a lot. We talked about like ways to like make it a little more cumbersome. We talked about the effect it has on kids. There were lots of different things um, that we touched on. But if there was sort of like a parting general message for parents, if you were kind of like to summarize your message more or less in this context to this issue, what would be kind of like the the broad takeaway? I think I'm going to sound repetitious on purpose. Yeah, because uh, please remember. Yeah repetitious so like in my slide presentation this slide keeps popping up every five slides and it's what are your goals for your kids is the technology in their life helping or hurting that, that goal right mm-hmm. so like that's sort of where i've landed and it's where i'm gonna stay for a while until i change my mind but um <laughs> yeah there, there is great. no like you like you were kind of saying with values like go up to the highest value. Like why talk about screen time and why talk about these detail things if we're not talking about the highest value first? Right. So the highest value is like technology is just a tool, uh, you know, like a hammer or a pencil. Mm-hmm. It's just a tool. Um, they're just getting better and they're accelerating things. So it is changing you know, fundamentally changing things, but is it changing it in the way that you want it to change? Um, you are not, mi- you put a projector in your house, you're not missing out on anything. Like, <laughs> you, you've actually made your life better by going to old technology, right? That's right. It's just a tool, it's the tool that yes. is best for, for the job. Yes. Right, in that, in that context. So, you know, that's my message. What do you want for your kids? If it's interrupting their sleep, it's not good. Like right. if screen time is interrupting their sleep. It's not good. If they're, but if they're on their, uh, learning how to code on Khan Academy, mm-hmm. I'm not going to count that as negative screen time. Yeah. Like, you know, they can get, get paid for mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like if you're, yeah. if you're on there learning something, you know, great. Um, you know, you're, you're getting closer to a goal that yeah. you have for yourself. So, no, it's beautiful, man. I, I mean, it's a great way to, to frame it. And the context that you give for that, I think, is is really um, helpful. I think especially now, I just feel like it's something um, this, you know, when we, when we connected around this, this is like a it's a it's a passionate topic for me, even though it's not at the epicenter of like what I do, um, because I do see the shifts in kids. And I and I I'm, as a parent, I'm just, you know, I want like the best for my daughter, obviously. So I'm attentive to these things. And I think it's something because we get so addicted to it, it gets glossed over too. I mean, we're so addicted to our technology that yeah. we're, it's also hard to be like, hey, stop doing that when, you know, you're <laughs> yeah. doing it. So there's like, right. there's, there's a disconnect right, right, right. there. There's definitely a disconnect. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, we're all guilty Luke, of all the things that we talked about today. <laughs> oh, 100%. All guilty of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. Um, well, Luke, if people want to, um, check out your podcast, can you give us the name again? And then also, um, yep. the best way to, to find it, you know, the platforms that are sharing it, or if it's just an online thing, yeah, whatever you got. Uh, yeah, you should just go to virtual leadership and then there's a link to all of our, uh, blogs and, and podcasts and the other stuff we're doing. Um, so if you're interested in just leadership, you're going to find a lot. Um, if you're interested in school leadership, you're going to find tailor made, uh, you know, niche podcast just for you. So, uh, yeah. hope anybody checks it. They're interested. Very cool, man. Well, I appreciate that. Um, well, man, thanks for your time. Thanks for, for diving in <clears throat> on this topic and, and getting to have, 
uh, this kind of conversation because I think it's a great conversation to have. And I'm just, I'm happy to see the work that you are doing. Like it's a, it's a good, you know, it's time well spent. That's for sure. And, and likewise, I think you guys are doing amazing things um, on, on your channel here. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be a fan now. Uh, Rock listening, on, working on my mindfulness and <laughs> with my house and stuff. Yeah. And get, I'm kidding. And get, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, totally. into it. I'm, I'm getting into it. Very cool. And get a, maybe get a Thank projector you. in your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm right. about to throw away my TV tonight. Right. Thinking about it. It's now. garbage night too. <laughs> well, good stuff, man. Um, thank you again for all your time, man. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll connect again soon sometime. Thank you. All right, man. Take care.